Check it out, somebody gave me a free car. It's actually true. Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. I'm excited about this video because I'm gonna try something new that uh, hopefully we can do in the future. This is a free car. This car was given to me because it's totaled. It doesn't look totaled. It looks fine. It's got about 150,000 miles on it. It runs perfectly. There's only one thing wrong with it, and that is it has a CVT transmission that needs to be replaced. CVT is continuously variable transmission. There's no gears in it. There's, uh, well, we're gonna look at all that. It is an awful lot of labor to replace one of these. The transmission itself is quite expensive too. You're looking at around $5,000 and uh, that totals the car. So uh, this was gonna go to the crusher and instead some uh, kind person gave it to me and the idea is I am going to fix this car and then I'm gonna give it away. We'll talk more about that, but let's get to work. I'm gonna drive it a little bit so that you can hear this thing. That's not going anywhere. So here is said transmission. There's an awful lot that has to happen to get that transmission out of there. All of this, this cross member has got to come off. This exhaust has to get out of the way. Uh, but the good news is I wanted to get a look at the rest of the car and uh, you know, it actually, it actually looks great. There's very little rust under here. You know, these things just have surface rust on them. That's totally fine. So the rest of the car has plenty of life left in it. It certainly has another good 50,000 miles in it that um, we're gonna try to get out of it. First thing I'm gonna do is drain the fluid out of that transmission, and then we're gonna get to work on removing it. Gonna be a lot of time lapse there, and during that I'm gonna explain what's going on with this vehicle and what I'm gonna do with it. All right, so mainly what I need to get to is under all this junk, there is a transmission mount that I have to unbolt. So let me start ripping stuff out of here. That's what has to happen. Gotta love the plastic clips. They never break. So what am I gonna do with this car? The short answer is I'm gonna give it to someone who needs it and who deserves it. I didn't always live on a farm. Uh, I actually grew up in the suburbs, maybe kind of the more rural suburbs, but, but still suburbs. Plenty of houses around, neighbors, that kind of thing. Our farm is in a much more remote area and raising my kids here has opened my eyes to an issue that I wasn't aware of before. And that is there are kids from humble backgrounds who are quite literally trapped by the geography that they're growing up in. In other words, if they wanna go get a job, there's nowhere around that they can go. They can't walk, even riding a bike is not reasonable in many cases. Transportation is huge in a rural area. My kids have friends who not only can they not afford a car of their own, but there was no car in the household. How are they ever gonna learn to drive? How are they ever gonna get their first job when they lived 30 miles from the nearest store? So this is all transmission here. So these coolant lines here need to come off. I think I might be draining the coolant. And they love these plastic clips. I guess they make assembly at the factory easy and then they torture mechanics for the rest of the vehicle's life. That's worth it. So here's what I'm gonna do with this car. I'm going to go to one of the high schools in my area. I'm gonna to talk to the guidance counselor and get a list of students who are working hard, come from humble backgrounds, and could really use a leg up, getting good grades, getting a job, and get them started in life. An 18-year-old just graduating high school that uh, has no idea it's coming and they're gonna get a free car. And this is where I'm hoping that you guys can help me out. I could use some help paying for the parts and other expenses that will be involved 
absolutely none of the money for this is going to go to me. It is going to go to this young, hardworking student who could use a hand getting started in life. The best way to contribute is to join me on Patreon. Check the links in the description. I'm going to save all my Patreon donations until I've saved enough to pay for this car. And if you wanted to do a one-time donation just to this project, you can also do that on Buy Me A Coffee. Just leave a comment that you want it to go to the car fund. There's a speed sensor right here. All right, I do not see anything else to uh, disconnect up here, except for, of course, the mount. But um, we're gonna go underneath and get everything ready under there. So here's the problem here. This is why this is such a labor intensive job. Here's the transmission. <laughs> you see that? It's not coming out with that in the way. And that is connected to the wheels. The axles are going into the transmission. All this stuff has to come out. Both axles have to come out. Even this exhaust is gonna have to come out. And then, then we'll be ready to start thinking about actually lowering the transmission out of there. So, let's get to work. That's the tie rod end. So I'm gonna show you a trick my Meemaw taught me. Or maybe it was Eric O. I don't know, I can't remember. Shove a piece of cardboard in here so that those brakes don't uh, end up falling out because it's going to be a while before I put this thing back together. Oh, she's moving. So, let's take a pry bar. There we go. So here's the good news. This side is done. Here's the bad news. I got to do the same thing to the other side. Ah, oh, I forgot Meemaw's trick. You know, I should give credit where credit is due. I found a YouTuber called Pine Hollow Diagnostics who's doing this exact job and made a pretty good video of it. So if you want all the details, go watch his video. Mine's just gonna be a quick breeze through. So I just unbolted the steering column. It slides down over that shaft right there. There's a little bracket on this exhaust I need to undo. That's the last thing. that heavy.
So there it is. That's your steering rack. This I unbolted. This is what goes into the passenger compartment. And there's a linkage with the uh, with the steering column right there. And then inside here is the rack. And there's a pinion on the end of this. So when you turn the wheel, it's moving a rack back and forth. Goes to your tie rods, which of course turn the wheels. Let's see if I can get this exhaust. may have to get out the acetylene now that front one just buzzed right off so did that one yeah, at least it's not going to be all of them fighting me that hard See if that helps me at all. Ugh. Yes, it does. You'll be good. Okay, disconnecting the drive shaft. One transfer case. So you guys may have noticed all the oil in this area. Well, it's leaking from this. This is the oil cooler. And I did a search and found there's a technical service bulletin on this, a TSB. And there's a gasket in there they want you to replace and then the gasket against the engine. So two relatively cheap parts. And uh, so I'm gonna do that while I'm here. Stupid not to fix it when it's <laughs> so easily accessible. Typically that's like impossible to get to. So important to get this cleaned up so that when I put it back together, I'm gonna to know if there's any leaks. Tempting to use a power washer. Yeah, I just don't wanna do that. So I'm using a hand cleaner. And we'll finish it up with a little brake cleaner. All right, that's a little better. So now in the future, I'd be able to see if there's another leak. And I wanted to get it cleaned off before I took this apart so I didn't have to worry about getting junk in the engine as I was doing that. Could it really only be two bolts? Wow. There you go. Crazy that that's only on there with two bolts. I was afraid there was gonna be a bolt tucked up behind that was gonna be fun, but uh, yeah. So there's the flex plate. That's basically the same thing as a flywheel, except on an automatic, it's not as heavy duty. You call it a flex plate. And the starter kicks out and engages with those teeth up in there and cranks the engine. I do not like the way that one feels. That one 
feels like it might want to break off. Okay, so these bolt the flex plate to the torque converter in the transmission. Okay, now it is a matter of uh, pulling the transmission bolts. I've already got these loose. We need to lower the car, get the top ones, get jacks underneath the, both the engine and the transmission, and then we're gonna lower and work it out. Okay, this is the engine mount. So there's a support beam under here that's like part of the body. And this bracket comes up off of that and the engine is hanging here. There's a little bushing there that allows it to flex. So that's what's supporting the engine. Over on this side, there's that support beam. You can see it a little better. This is the mount for the transmission. It goes down onto this bracket. So that's what's holding the transmission. The two are bolted together in the middle so they act as a single unit. So basically that and that are what's holding all of the weight here. Right now, I've gone underneath and gotten a jack under the engine, jack under the transmission, and now we can take those transmission bolts out and start lowering this thing. We're going to have to bring it down and that way to disengage from the engine, and then it should come out, in theory, hopefully, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> Moving already. So right here is where I'm looking for them to separate. I think there's just a dowel pin or something that's preventing it from moving. Well, that certainly did it.
torque converter was supposed to come with it, and I didn't realize it wasn't coming with it until it was already pretty much out and cocked all sideways. So I'll get that out in a second. I've got the uh, the engine on a jack stand now, and the lift is down on the locks, so it can stay like this indefinitely. But I realized I didn't think this whole process all the way through. We'll talk about that in a second. Let me get this uh, torque converter off of here. You see why they call that the flex plate? <laughs> I put this across as sort of a safety, but the jack stand has it, and that jack stand's not going anywhere. And actually, even without the jack stand, the engine's also not going anywhere, but I don't want to leave it hanging like that. My thought here was I knew I was going to have to do something to support the engine. I had envisioned this. And then I thought, well, then I'll just let the car down, and I'll just, you know, push it over there until I can get the parts and get it fixed, which is gonna take some time. I need to, uh, I was planning on using my, my Patreon donations to pay for this transmission and you know the other parts that I'm gonna need. Which I... The boot is torn on this left front axle and I don't think there's any way to replace that. I'll check, but I think you have to just get a new axle. The stuff for the oil cooler and then obviously the transmission and you know, then whoever I end up giving this to, they may need help with gas money and insurance and stuff like that just to get on their feet and get started. You know, the idea is this is going to allow them to go back and forth from a job and then they can take over from then, from then on. But anyway, to make a long story longer, this is going to require several thousand dollars worth of parts and money to help this individual. So, yeah, I knew it was going to take some time. I thought, oh, I'll just let it down and I'll roll it over there. Well, do you see the problem? I cannot roll that thing. Could I move it? Yes, I could find a way to move it, but man, what a pain. So I'm hoping that uh, that you guys will help me out and we'll be able to raise this money faster and I can get this thing back together and we'll make this happen. You know, let me know in the comments what you guys think of a video like this. Uh, I think it's kind of cool to fix something and then give it to somebody in need. You know, if you want to contribute to something like that, maybe that would make you feel good as well. And uh, we'll get this done and we can make this a uh, periodic thing that we do on the channel every now and then. Let me know what you think. For now, let me get uh, all this junk cleaned up and um, then we're gonna take a look at that transmission. I've been talking about the transmission as if it's a goner. I'll open it up, you know, who knows? Maybe there'd be something I could fix, but I think I know what's wrong with it and I think it's really unlikely. So behind this cover should be the belt. And let's go on there. That belt is awfully loose. The carnage doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. Like, so if you look down there, you can see on that thing, there's a bunch of bits of metal. There's little chips of metal here. I can feel them. And I think it's coming off the belt. Usually the belt is what fails on these. The belt is made of multiple spring steel bands that go around and are through these plates that give it its shape. But this belt is slipping. May have to dig a little further, but look at that down in there. See all that? That's uh, that's no bueno. Bits of metal. Something has been chewed up in here. And they don't sell parts for this transmission. All you do is get a new transmission, that's your option. Or get a used transmission if you could find one used and you knew how many miles were on it. But uh, I think that's pretty unlikely too. So you probably know how regular transmissions work. It's just different gears and their teeth meshing to give you different gear ratios. This gear here on the end, the, the smaller one, not this one out here, is a 10 tooth gear. And it meshes with this one, which has 47 teeth. So say this is a 50 tooth gear, well then it would be five to one. This would have to turn five times for every one turn of this. And that's about what this is. So that would be a low gear. If this was the engine, then this is what the wheels would be doing, turning much slower than the engine. So if you wanted to then go to a higher gear, 
where the wheels were spinning faster relative to the engine, you would either decrease the size of this gear or increase the size of this gear. Well, it turns out I have a gear for this larger one here. So if I mesh with this one, now this will be going much faster. This one's actually turning a little faster than the drill because there's fewer teeth on this than there is on this. So, and that works with both manual transmissions and automatic transmissions. The only difference is how does the gear change, but you're still picking different gear ratios. CVT is totally different. After trying to explain it many times, I decided the best way to, sh to do it would be to just make a model. So I printed some cones to, uh, to do my pulleys. So this is an adjustable pulley. These are the, the same two cones that are over here. These are just closer together. So when they're further apart, the belt goes down into the center and it effectively becomes a small pulley. When they're closer together, the belt comes out onto the edge and it becomes a big pulley. On this side, I put a line on each pulley so that you can see the difference in RPM. And then I'm just driving it with a drill here. Assuming that drill is our engine, and it's gonna be spinning at the RPM of this one, this would be low gear, because this is gonna to have to rotate multiple times to get around that once. When you have an unfixed axles like this, you can't just tighten this pulley up. You're gonna to have to loosen this one as well, because your belt would need to be longer for both pulleys to be compressed, if that makes sense. So Those are about the same size now, so that should be roughly one to one. And now let's go to high gear. Okay, we got it in high gear now. So, you can see how pivotal the belt is. That belt has to be an exact length and it needs to have very good grip with the pulleys and can't slip and can't stretch and all that kind of stuff. And then what the transmission is doing is it's adjusting the spacing of the cones and doing it perfectly so that the belt tension stays the same. I'm sure that was an engineering challenge to get that to work. But uh, you can see how you have a continual gear ratio from low to high, there's no switching or anything required. And the other huge benefit to this is your engine now gets to run at the optimal RPM. The engine doesn't have to go up and down in RPMs to change your speed. This can go up and down in RPMs while your engine's putting out peak power output uh, based on the engine performance curve. So uh, it makes the, the vehicle more fuel efficient and there's no switching of gears or anything like that while you're driving it. Pretty cool stuff. This is the output from the engine. It hooks onto the other side and spins this. And then this is the output basically to the wheels. It goes to the transfer case, of course. This is where all the gearing happens. So right now, this cone is wider. You can see the belt is, is well into that pulley. So that pulley is, is effectively smaller. So you're in like first gear, or you're in a low portion of the continual gear ratio that you can get out of a CVT. So when the engine is going fast, this is spinning whatever it's spinning. But since it's a small pulley and this one is constricted, you can see the belt is further out on this one. This big pulley is not going to be rotating as quickly because, you know, this little pulley here will take more rotations to get all the way around this big pulley here. So then as you go up higher speed, what's happening is this pulley is being pushed together. This one's being pulled apart and the belt will then be further out on this one, further in on this one, and your gear ratio changes, and now the wheels go faster relative to the RPM of the engine. When you put it in park, you're actually causing this to engage with one of these teeth right here and just lock it up. So you, this is the shifter. You're pushing on that, which pushes that out into one of these, and the car won't move. It's a pretty neat system, but, uh, but obviously they're not the most robust transmission out there. Uh, they do tend to fail. If you're 
interesting. That belt just went from tight to loose. Something, something goofy going on there. See, now it's tighter. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to keep ripping and tearing just to see if I can find a smoking gun. okay that's the output the other side of that is the output to the transfer case but if it took if it should have taken a week he'd take hey, look at all the is that a magnet there yeah look at all the chips on that thing so something's completely melted down something in there destroyed but it's not entirely obvious what. That's the valve body. So that's like controlling the fluid and everything to make it work. And yeah, I, I can't explain how it's really doing what it does, but it's using the CVT fluid to, I think, hydraulically control the size of the pulleys. that over all right with the valve body out you can really see that belt up in there and see the two cones and how if they came closer together that pulley would get bigger effectively and that's what's on the back side of it I can't explain what this thing is doing but I do want to open it and just see if I can see a source of any uh, of those metal shavings that we keep finding I doubt it's going to be in here, but yeah, it's interesting. Let's open it up. Wow. Look at that. I don't see any source of uh, metal shavings in here. What an amazing thing. Engineers went through and figured out where all the fluid needed to flow and what conditions and different valves and everything to get this to work. There's some smart people out there. If I didn't have to return this transmission for an $800 core charge, I would hang this on the wall. That's a work of art. So there's the different valves. They're kind of like spool valves, but I mean the number of passageways, that's just amazing to me. Out of sheer stubbornness, I'm going to see if I can take this apart. Yeah, so that is what goes to the transfer case. And then that goes to one axle and that goes to the other axle. So it's all wheel drive. And you know, even though it wasn't like an obvious failure, I mean, the belt is slipping. When you would drive it, you'd feel it jerking. And I have to think that even though the belt looked reasonably good, I think that was the problem. Either that or the mechanism that was tensioning those pulleys to make them be in the right position. 
So yeah, no smoking gun found. I think most likely the belt stretched and it was causing it to slip because it was slipping. It was generating metal shavings and that was the failure. I bet you a transmission expert who knows a lot more about this than I do is gonna watch this video and he or she will leave a comment and probably tell us what's going on with this thing. If I find any new information, I'll put it in the description. So check the description if you wanna see the final conclusion. One more thing I want to do is look at this axle. Let's see if we can do anything with this boot. Look at that, there's a retainer right there. With that out, I think this thing, yep, it'll slide out now. And you know, this is not a constant velocity joint. I'm not sure what this joint would be called. It's a cool joint though. Basically it allows it to slide and gives you some, some movement, but it can't, you know, it, it sends the rotation right on through because there's, there's slots in this thing. Got them cleaned up a little better. And it turns out these aren't just simple wheels. They actually are bearings and they're down on these spikes sticking out there that have been peened off so they won't come back out and uh, those just fit into the shape of that so that it allows movement longitudinally it will always transmit the rotation and it also allows a little bit of angulation i called the dealer uh, he told me that you pretty much had to destroy like all the boots on this to replace one of them, but I think he must have been thinking of a different axle because yeah, that's, that's easy. So I can pump this back full of grease and um, I can get a new boot for this and put it back together. So yeah, don't need a new axle. So here we sit and huge shout out to my patrons. Uh, they are going to be the primary funders of this little endeavor. And once I have accrued enough money to buy these parts, I'm going to get them. And we're gonna put this back together and then we're gonna give it to uh, give it to one of the high schoolers who's about to graduate this year. So that's the current status of things. So what do we have? We need a new transmission. We need new CVT fluid. We're gonna need new coolant. And we're also gonna need a new boot for that axle right there. We need a new gasket set for the oil cooler. And I think that'll do it. That'll make this a... Uh, a nice, fairly reliable car for somebody. But here's the real bummer. My wife's van needs the oil changed. And I have a lift. And I can't use it. <laughs> It'd be way more work to get that thing off the lift and move it out of the way and then put it back when I'm ready than it is to just do this the way I always used to do it. Rolling around on the ground with a creeper. Darn it. <laughs> so help me out. We need to get this thing back together, and I think it's going to be a fun video surprising a high school student with this. If you have any interest in that, your support's appreciated. Check the description, and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Oh, can't believe I'm doing this with a creeper again. Come on, guys, help me out here. This sucks.